I came across this interesting bug the other day from Rachel and by the name, by her name, you will be able to understand that this is going to be a software bug, Rachel True. And uh, what happened was that she was locked out of her iCloud for six months. You know, this bug has been there for quite a long time now, that means. And uh, she finally said it on Twitter and then it started gaining traction that, hey, something is wrong. So what happened was her last name is True, obviously that you might have seen. And uh, she would get a message, an error message like this, iCloud has stopped responding with a little bit of detail, right? So I wasn't able to find the full message. She did not post the full message, but by the looks of it, obviously it seems like it is trying to set, Apple is trying to set somewhere the property last name to true, right? Which is a Boolean value, but it probably is expecting a string value. Now, a couple of things about this. First of all, it seems like a native application error, right? It is. It does not look like a website error to me at least because you have the send to Apple, close stuff, all this stuff. And honestly, I've never really seen this screen in terms of crash and seeing this Apple execution screen. So I don't really know if this is like the standard screen which Apple shows. So what do we know so far? Not much. Um, I did some research. I did some reading on Reddit and everywhere and, you know, hacker news as well. But I wasn't able to actually see any any particular um, credible sort of reason why this happened. So I wanted to create this video on my own just to see what I think this could be a probable cause and what I would do if I was the first engineer who was looking at this bug. Right. So. First things first, you see that this appears to be a native application, right? It's, it's not a website, it's not something on the web. So there are um, two possible layers of crash here, right? I mean, it would have been the same on the web, but let's, let's just talk about this. So the first layer is that the client crashed and the second layer is the server crashed, right? So if the server crashed, you know, server has sent some status error and then this error detail, and then it made the client I mean, client is configured to crash as well if the server has crashed, which I do believe is not the cause. Why? Because usually errors from servers come in a standard template where you will have status as error and then error message as something, right? And it does not look like, you know, when the server has crashed and the client is fine, you probably can display a nice notification or a nice message with the error. You don't really need to crash the whole application. Right, so this feels to me as if the server is fine in terms of sending the response, but the client has crashed, right? So the client is coded in Swift, Swift UI, stuff like that. But what has happened is that once they have made a request to a remote server, it returned a JSON or anything like that, which contained a last name property with a Boolean true instead of string true right so that's that's what my hypothesis will be so it's the api which is at fault right i mean the fault point so last name technically should be a string from api and the client is not checking if that is a string or not it just tries to you know i don't know maybe cast it forcefully or do something and and then this thing happens and the client crashes now the point becomes now that why was the last name from the API, a Boolean true in the first place. This is um, the point where things would get tricky because there are a lot of ways that could happen in terms of dynamically typed language, you know, like JavaScript, for example, which tries to make sense of a lot of things um, by themselves. So yeah, I mean, this looks like um, something which has originated on a on a API surface itself, which is probably coding coded in a dynamic language at the time of registration. You know, if they are writing their first name as uh, Rachel and last name as true, somehow in the application layer, I believe that assuming let's assume let's have a one more assumption. Um, th these are actually a lot of assumptions now that Apple is also using a NoSQL kind of database, or you know, even if it's SQL based. Um, they were able to set the last name to true Boolean. That makes much more sense in a NoSQL database because it's schema-less, you know, MongoDB, stuff like that. You sure you can enforce schema with mongoose and something, but 
we don't know like you know it 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 is easier to just have uh, weird values in documents in a NoSQL database so my hypothesis is this data which is which is responsible for displaying name and everything or whatever it is is somehow stored in a NoSQL database which is schemaless and uh, then last name became a boolean true there instead of a string true but the question still remains that how did it become a boolean true now this is um, honestly i don't really know how this has happened but there are multiple ways of happening this you know this could happen if you are sending a response from um, you know on registration of the user rachel first name true last name so the response might be sent as a url encoded thing right and then um, on the server when it's decoding those url parameters if apple is using their own specific decoding library or something like that you know how url parameters are passed first name is equal to rachel and last name is equal to true now this might has happened that rachel comes out as string but last name comes out as a boolean value and it you know just simply creeps its way to the database somehow no sequel and then when you access it from another service this happens so this is you know this could be completely a bs theory you know it's just a wild wild guess that how this bug could propagate again my theory is that from the registration point or some point where that true information is supplied uh, there's some url encoded version of thing being sent to the server that has that probably has you know there are a lot of ways this could happen this is just one way i'm thinking about that probably has a bug in its url decoder uh, in the parameters decoder from the body which converts true to a boolean somehow again seems like a huge security vulnerability if this was there because then you can pass in numbers and arrays and you know if you are able to get to um the database query level then also all sorts of no sql injections or maybe even sql who knows so um yeah once you have that value propagated in the database the api again just pulls out that information from database and sends it to the client the client now is not using any dynamic language or anything and then it loses its mind when it sees that uh last name expects a string and you're force casting a boolean to a string or you know you're trying to set a boolean to a string value and then it crashes right so yeah i mean um the reason you know just to reiterate and reinforce why i believe this is a client crash not a server crash is because server crash i hope would probably be monitored by apple anyway right and um you know it's a long shot i don't know how much she has tried opening the icloud in the past six months but if you're seeing a lot of reports seeing that the api or the server is failing the specific error message the backend is failing the specific error message for this user you probably would take out some time to debug it right but on the client you can see that unless you send it to apple i don't believe apple is getting this log or you know i don't believe apple is getting that information so that's my take on what I believe um, is a possible um, cause of this bug. What do you think um, that has made this happen? I would love to read your theories in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this bug. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope to see you in the next one real soon. If you do not have liked the video, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel and share it with others. That's all for this one. And like I said, see you in the next video.